but when I was young, um, um, you know, the, in, in, the, in the local town, um, the bank or the insurance company was a sort of pillar of society. And, you, re you know, you respected them. And the, the head of the bank was, you know, head of the, uh, oh, I don't know, the sort of debating society in the town, what do you call those different sort of social rotary club and things like that. You know, it was all very sort of honorable sort of stuff, you know. And now, if you look at the surveys now, I mean, about 80% respect in those days for these institutions. And now, um, what it, this, a recent survey I saw, uh, you know, respect, and this was before the crisis, incidentally. Now, it, it's probably down about 1%. But before the crisis, um, the respect for banks and, and financial institutions was down to 27% of society respected them. And that's down there with second-hand car salespeople and... <laughs> and, and um, and uh, it's actually slightly lower than, uh, than double glazing salesmen. Um, that is in decay. And it's being replaced, or should we say it needs to be replaced, by self-responsibility. But when you take the authority away, whether that authority was nasty or nice, whether it was a benevolent dictatorship or a, 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 a malevolent dictatorship, there was an order produced by that. Take that away so that either failing leadership or a failure of respect for that leadership, a deserved failure of respect for that leadership, what happens at that point is that people are not accustomed to being self-responsible and therefore they go berserk for a bit. And that's what's going on. That's what's going on in our society. There's a breakdown of leadership and people are being irresponsible until they learn to be responsible. Because the only way you learn to be responsible is to have to be responsible. The primary product of coaching is building self-responsibility in the other person, isn't it? That's what you're doing. You're helping the other person to make their own choices. Choice making is how you get responsibility. You have to make your own choices. And the whole coaching industry, or I call it now a profession, has grown up to meet this urgent need for society to shift into proper responsibility. So, in a sense, coaches are the midwives of this birth of self-responsibility in society. And that's why it, the whole thing has grown up in the last 25 years. Because 25 years ago was, could be identified as a time where hierarchy began to break down. So the industry grows up to meet that need. This is the future. I mean, I'm deeply grateful for the existence of coaching as a profession. If we took self-responsibility for our health, the health care budget would be reduced by about 75% if people just accepted the fact that they are responsible for their own health. Our society is seriously ill because we do not take self-responsibility. How do we bring in education, build self-responsibility into young people earlier instead of uh, dominating them? America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Britain have higher levels of stress and distress, actually twice as high as the average of other countries. Mrs. Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, who had um, a love affair before the love affair between Blair and Bush, um, uh, but they had a love affair, and they introduced what we call selfish capitalism. It's very much glorifying the individual, very much the success of the individual. You can succeed, you go for it as an individual. That was that extreme version of capitalism. So there was, in the short term, there was a gain by Thatcherism was good and everyone waved the flag and said, isn't it great, Thatcher's doing a wonderful job. Not exactly what I felt at the time, I have to say, but, um, but um, that's what happened. There was an economic benefit and it was a social disaster because it takes far longer to extract ourselves from the damage that has been done by the glorification of the individual and the effects that that has consciously and subconsciously about people feeling inadequate because they can't measure up, because they're not an individual success. It causes all these other spin-off 
things like childhood obesity, violence, teenage pregnancy and all those sort of things that come out of that. And we've got to understand these bigger pictures. One of the great tragedies of the social injustice that's going on is that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. The three richest men in the world are worth more than the poorest 600 million. Uh, and worth more is not quite the right expression, I think. And one of the, one of the uh, uh, companies I know, a company called Target, which is a big uh, sort of chain store of uh, consumer rubbish that they have in America. Um, and uh, if you work for Target, um, you know, I should uh, <laughs> not mention it. Um, but the, the chief executive of, of Target, this was several years ago now, was making $73,000 a day. And the average staff pay in Target was $64 a day. And then we have the tobacco industry, of course, which is principal product is to kill people. I have no hesitation in saying it's all that. To me, it is evilness itself. And the difficulty is, I mean, that is, you know, two and a half times what, what, what um, Bin Laden killed in one day. And we had a war against terrorism, and we've been in trouble ever since. And yet, our leaders will sit and have dinner and give prizes to the executives of tobacco companies. This is madness. If we say, well, it's not very nice to be in the tobacco industry, or it doesn't suit my values, nothing changes. You know, we've got to call a spade a spade. And if it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. And if you upset some people, you upset some people. That's the only way we're going to create change. I wrote an article about capitalism four years ago and was sort of castigated a little bit for it. And what's interesting now, I'm finding even business executives are sort of quietly coming in the coffee break and saying, gosh, you know, this whole system's breaking down and it's, it's, it doesn't do it. It's not right. Well, if only they'd talk to their colleagues and be able to speak out loud about it instead of trying to hide it, then we'd be getting somewhere.